Great. Hello, everybody. My name is Terry Eichel, and I work with the Interreligious Eco Justice Network. Uh, we are a faith based environmental group in Connecticut. We work with religious communities. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Energy Efficiency for Houses of Worship. Um, this webinar is co sponsored by the American Baptist Con Conference in Connecticut, the Southern New England United Church of Christ, Connecticut Energy Solutions, Energy Resources and Titan LED lighting uh, resources. Together, we're presenting Energy Efficiency for Houses of Worship, and we're very grateful uh, for Colleen Morrison from United Illuminating, who's giving our presentation. This webinar is the first in a series of webinars designed to help houses of worship reduce their energy use, implement clean energy, and improve their building overall. The second webinar on October 30th will focus on the federal tax rebates for clean energy and clean vehicles. And our final webinar on November 13th will focus on funding for historic renovations through uh, Connecticut nonprofit Preservation Connecticut, because restoration uh, projects often dovetail with other building improvement projects like energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is the topic for today because energy efficiency can help us significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, energy usage, and energy costs. And I always like to say the greenest and cheapest energy is the energy we are not using. So I would like to welcome Colleen again. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm just going to stop my share so she can start hers. Thanks, Terry. Um, I'm going to go thing. ahead. And Actually, we'll have a Q&A after she is done speaking. So just put it in the in the chat or the Q&A. It looks like, yeah, both of them. Thank you so much. Take it away. Okay. All right. Um, my name is Colleen Morrison. I am the program manager for the energy efficiency program for small businesses in Connecticut. I run the program alongside with my partners at Eversource. Um, some of you might have seen my presentation last year if you attended, but um, we do have some enriched opportunities that I'd like to talk about today. Um, I do have a presentation I'm going to share. Let me pull that up. And second. Okay, so hopefully you guys can all see that. Um, so again, I'm Colleen. Uh, my partner, Rachel from Eversource is not able to make it today, but I do have her contact information in here. We will share the presentation after so that um, you could reach out to either one of us, depending on what territory you're in. Um, we run the program along with Energize CT. They support us. Um, and again, we're trying to help residents and businesses um, with the resources they need to save money and use clean energy. Um, we, you know, work with our vendors to make sure that we are educating you, um, that making sure that you're aware of the different incentives we offer um, and tell you about the financing opportunities you have to use at your facility. Some of the benefits that we have is we come out and do a no cost um, energy audit at your location. We connect you with one of our contractors. We have 25 that work in our program across the state of Connecticut. Most of them have been with us for 10 or 15 years or longer. Um, they know how to take a look at your location and see what types of upgrades you can do to save money in lighting, refrigeration, um, weatherization opportunities. Um, if you need to you know, upgrade your HVAC equipment, stuff like that, we do offer a 0% financing option on your electric utility bill after the job is completed. Um, we do offer some support for non-English speakers. And again, we're always trying to reduce your operating cost and your environmental footprint. Um, we do have something called the microbusiness program where we're offering incentives up to 80% on non-equipment measures um, at your location. That's mostly lighting, that's you know pipe wrap, stuff like that, other weatherization opportunities. We automatically pre-approve financing options there. Um, and as of today, we are offering up to 90% for churches um, across the board. So it's a really enriched in incentive. 
as long as you sign on for the project by November 1st. So we did advise all our vendors today that we are offering a special opportunity for churches and schools, um, which you guys will fall into that category where we will offer up to a 90% incentive on the total cost of the project, which is a huge change um, and an enriched opportunity just for the next month and a half. Um, so if you're interested, and I'm gonna get into some more details about that, but this was a pretty exciting opportunity for our vendors to know um, that we are offering this because uh, we haven't ever offered that much in the past. We finance um, up to $100,000. Um, on your electric utility bill. And um, that would be after any of the incentives are applied and the job is completed, we would then add that monthly um, repayment option onto your utility bill. If you need more than $100,000, we do have an option um, to go through a third-party financing company, the National Energy Improvement Foundation, where they can give more than $100,000 um, and, you know, that would be billed off your utility bill. And we could discuss that if that was an option you wanted to go with. Um, we do offer this program in the whole state of Connecticut. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the UI territory, which you can see on this map. I'm sure you're familiar who your electric utility provider is, um, but we do work in conjunction with Eversource um, and they they are offering you know, enriched incentives, not up to 90, they will do up to 80 um, for micro business offers, but UI right now is, is offering a special promotion just until November 1st. How to participate? Um, you would reach out to us to schedule a free audit and we would connect you with um, one of our vendors that works in our program. So my um, program's direct email is sb for small business at uinet.com. And if you're in the Eversource territory, you would reach out to them at sbeact at eversource.com and they would connect you with a, a contractor as well. And again, our contractors are trained by us to make sure that they're educating you. They're going to tell you about the value of working in our program. Um, they are going to do a comprehensive review of your facility and let you know what you might want to do now and what you might want to do in five years. Um, and then also tell you about the different financial opportunities we have, um, such as financing on your bill or off bill. Um, ours is at a 0%, so is Eversource. Um, if you go off bill, uh, that might be at a blended rate. Um, but we do have the opportunity for you to, you know, borrow more money if needed. Um, I did bring in some um, sample projects to show you what something might look look like. So we did a project at the Orange Congregational Church recently. The total cost of the project was 19807 It was a comprehensive project where we did both gas and electric cost saving measures. Um, through UI, they received a $14,748 incentive, um, and we did improved lighting um, and also some HVAC stuff. Um, there was a gas incentive of $696. Their monthly loan payment was $90 over the course of 48 months, and as soon as the loan was paid off, their annual dollar savings was about $1,000. Um, so this is, you know, what we consider a micro business project, mostly lighting, um, but this is on the smaller scale. Again, um, it was a, a pretty enriched incentive for the customer and a, a pretty low monthly payment for the church. Uh, this is another project that was a very large comprehensive project that had both gas and electric cost savings um, in Bridgeport. Um, and they put in, you know, high performance lighting controls with occupancy sensors and photo cells. Um, they did some HVAC upgrades, um, put in programmable thermostats, some energy efficient refrigeration with controls, night covers and ECM motors, pipe insulation, um, also spray valves and low flow shower heads and aerators. So their overall total cost for their project was about 144000 um, they received a $52,000 electric incentive, 
uh, 3,000 approximate gas incentive. And their, their monthly loan payment was a little bit higher because of the total cost of the project. But, you know, it was, you know, about $1,800 for their monthly loan payment. And their annual dollar savings after they pay off the loan is $24,000. So that's pretty significant over the course of time. Um, so those are two different sample projects. Um, and let me see. So the project cycle with us, if you're interested, we're going to check your usage history and see which program you're going to qualify for. We will connect you with the contractor to schedule an on-site audit. Again, that is free. So there is no um, risk to doing this, no obligation. They're going to go ahead and do an audit of your facility and so, you know submit that back to the utility. We'll review it, do a pre-inspection if we need to. We'll then draft up some um, contracts for you to sign. You're going to come up with a plan with the contractor for the install. Um, usually, once the paperwork is signed, your project's going to start within 30 days. Um, once that's approved, they're going to develop that con construction plan with you, and they'll go ahead and install it. Once it's done, the contractor notifies us at the utility. We will go out and do a post-inspection if needed um, and a final review. We're going to pay the contractor directly and then apply the loan to your electric utility bill. Um, so it's a fairly simple, streamlined process um, that our vendors are familiar with. So uh, that's pretty much the way it works. And does anybody have any questions for me? Let me, wow, thank you so well, much, Pauline. So that much, was Pauline. that was great. Um, Sorry, I talked a little fast. <laughs> no, that's okay. Actually, I have a question. So one of the things that's really interesting about this is that um, it qual houses of worship and schools qualify. So if a synagogue has their synagogue building and then also a Jewish day school, yes, both of those entities would qualify separately or would they have to come under the same project so usually what we're doing is we're qualifying by building okay okay look it's we we were qualifying based on total usage under the tax id but we are changing it up a little bit this year where we're going to look at each individual location so you know we would do a project at the at the church or synagogue and then maybe at the school separate um it could be one total project depending on how it's entered um with the utility but yeah i mean churches and schools are getting the same 90 percent overall incentive not including taxes and some of the other things that we don't incentivize um but yeah, it's a, a very, very enriched incentive right now that we've offered. And that's, that's and this also is only available in the UI territory until November 1st. The project has to be signed. That's the that's the stipulation for this. Without that, um, most churches do qualify for up to 80 percent. So this is a little bit more enriched. Um, and this is on every measure that is incentivized. So things like HVAC equipment, we are giving a very enriched incentive. Um, one caveat is it doesn't apply to electric heat pumps. Oh, um, it does not. Okay. Does not. Um, but everything else that is normally incentivized, we are going to um, honor this through November 1st. And is insulation so incentivized? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if Great. you're interested in having an audit of your facility, and getting the opportunity to have this incentive, I strongly suggest that you reach out to us immediately to get an audit scheduled with the vendor and we'll connect you with someone immediately. And I believe there's some vendors on this call right now. So if you throw your church's information into the chat, they can reach out directly to you. So um, Lori Chadwick wanted uh, you to explain uh, the quote in bill. So the um, the way it works when we finance on your bill is if we break down the installment plan to 48 months or 60 months, um, we're going to take the total cost of the project, whatever your incentive, whatever you are um, putting on for the financing piece and break it out over the course of 48 months or 60 months, depending on what you qualify for. So it could be $90 in addition to your regular consumption charges on your bill. For the month, instead of paying, you know, a six thousand dollar loan up front, we're going to break it down into, you know, sixty installments for you. So it's a a lower amount that you pay. 
which works out great for churches because I know most of them are struggling a little bit. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah. Melinda has her hand raised, so I'm going to allow her to talk. Sure. Melinda? Hopefully you are. Melinda, you're muted if you're talking. Can I unmute? You. Can you hear me? There, yes, now we can, yes. Yeah, Um. you answered my question, so thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. So, um, and then another question, uh, Peter Festa said, do you have vendors that are knowledgeable in converting to electric heat pumps and minimizing the use of methane? Yes. So they all are, all of them have been trained in electric heat pumps and do install heat pumps, um, themselves, or they sub it out to somebody else that will do the install. So whoever we send you to should be able to discuss that with you. Great. And so for folks also to just, uh, I was recently at a church in Hartford that had a separate building where they had some like activity of sort of an activity slash storage building. Then they had their church offices across the street. Then they had their church building. And when I talked to the Eversource uh, representative, Colleen's colleague, Rachel, she said that as long as each of those buildings had their own mailing address they each qualified separately uh so right. we'll obviously confirm that with rachel but that's an that's an exciting uh new yeah. change for congregations yes absolutely and melinda you have your hand raised again i'm going to unmute you again if you want to speak but i don't know if you meant to do that no i didn't mean oh lower okay. hand sorry you're still I, there okay i don't okay. need to speak all right. So um, Peter Festa wants another, he would like an audit for his uh, church at St. Peter. So I'll make sure you get that. that yeah. So I just wrote down your info, Peter, oh, great. and I will connect you with the vendor. Great, great, great. Um, what's the, what is the um, overall, I, I think you might've gone through this, but the time frame, what people can expect from the time they sign up for the audit to the time it's actually completed. What's like a general time frame? So if it's just lighting upgrades and things like that, that's typically audits done and they're doing an install within 30 days um, or sooner. Those are those are quick and easy installs for us. Usually they, they have the materials, you know, at their warehouse that they can use to do an install. If you're going to be doing like an HVAC replacement, that might take a little bit longer because they have to order those, you know, the pieces of equipment. So sometimes there's shipping delays with equipment. Um, and so that could extend the timing, but usually a small business project, the turnaround is about 30 days or less. Oh, okay. Um, Diane, Laura, Diane Laricella wanted to know, are batteries slash storage equipment included? So we don't have batteries, um, and I don't know exactly what you mean by storage equipment, but batteries or backup battery, um, things like that are not part of our small business program right now. So I would say no to that. Okay. And did you see the um, thing in the queue? Lori Chadwick wanted her uh, church yep. added, I believe. Great. We have that I information. See. Terrific. I'm writing that down as well. Great. Elliot, uh, I'm going to allow you to talk. There you go. Now you are, I'm going to unmute you. Or I have to ask you to unmute. Okay. Elliot, can you unmute? I can't seem to ask him to unmute. If Elliot, if you put your question in the uh, in the chat or the sorry the Q and A, somehow the chat is not working. But if you put it in the Q and A, we can get to it. I can't seem to ask you to unmute, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And Lori, can you just let me know if are you in the Eversource territory? I don't know what UCCHH means. I don't. I don't know either off the top of my head. We will find out. But so, we will um, call you. For and for folks, for folks wondering, I know that there are a lot of folks that have gone um, through this project, this process before for for a smaller project. Can can a church do the micro business program uh, more than once with just different projects? Yes. 
So yeah, so we'll do like a phase one and a phase two, a phase three. Sometimes there's, you know, they'll only do like a portion of the church because they only have a certain budget they could spend at one time. Um, and, you know, and then they'll want us to come back and do like the church hall or another location. Um, and we will do that. So I know that um, that does come up. There used to be limits in, there are limits in some programs of how often you could participate, but for our program, we are allowing multiple phases over time. And that for, for folks watching this, that's something I really encourage for that exact reason is that budgets can be tough. And I always encourage folks to look at, um, the areas of your building that get the most use and, and start there. And it's often the church offices, uh, or the, the, uh, house of worship offices and potentially a, a room that's used for the community. Um, so that is a, a wise phase, but it's great that you can do it, you know, sort of more than once and really phase that in. Colleen, can yeah. you talk about the heat pump incentives? Cause I am getting a lot of interest from houses of worship on both heat pumps, heat pumps. and solar as they sort of move towards that. Yeah. So our solar program is run through a different, um, program altogether, um, mm -hmm. not under conservation. It's under a whole right. different program. So I can connect anybody to that program if they're interested in solar. As far as electric heat pumps, they do flow through our program. They are getting an increased incentive of $1,500 added on to whatever is incentivized on the project already. Um, and so that goes through the end of 2024. Um, but you know, we are looking to do what we call fuel optimization, where you're converting to electric heat pumps. That is kind of the goal of the business is to convert people. Um, typically, it's a very expensive project to convert to an electric heat pump. That's why there's that bonus kicker. Um, but um, we aren't giving additional incentives through the additional offer because it doesn't really generate savings for us necessarily um, because you're using more electric usage when you convert to electric heat pump. It just is a better scenario for the overall economy is the switching of, you know, heating types. Um, I know that probably doesn't sound the best, but that's the direction I'm getting from the business is we are incentivizing those a little bit already. Um, and so so, and so for those who are interested, we are doing uh, and and have the capability, the um, webinar on October 30th is about the federal tax rebates, the direct pay that can be used for solar. And solar is obviously a great thing to pair with heat pumps because it decreases your, right. your, yeah. your cost of electricity while you're moving to heat pumps, which are obviously they're more efficient, but they will, they do add to your electric load. Um and the direct pay is very exciting because it's a it's sort of automatic 30% tax rebate, but depending on where your house of worship is located, uh, there, there are additional rebates for environmental justice communities. There's additional rebates for um, uh, workforce uh, requirements and that sort of thing. And we'll get into all of that on October 30th. So I'll send out that information um, in my follow-up. So let's see here. And I've got... John wants to, the FCC in New Britain would like to be added. So yep, I'm writing that down. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to oh. send that over to Rachel in. Um, so Rachel's going to reach out to uh, the FCC in New Britain to the UCCHH. And the other one I wrote down is St. Peter's church um, in Cheshire. That's also Eversource. So That's they're going to be getting, okay. Um, they will be getting the list of these leads for sure. Unless there's a vendor on the call that wants to take them. I know I saw at least one on here. We um, have, and that's so. the thing. So yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. We have, um, obviously uh, the vendors through Energize are great, but we, I've developed relationships with probably four or five vendors that work a lot yeah. with houses of worship, which is awesome because houses yep. of worship, even though they are a small business, um, are different than a small business and you often have committees and multiple people that have to decide and sometimes a congregational vote needs to happen. So I'm happy yeah. to recommend some awesome vendors that, that really like working with houses of worship, are, uh, you know, very inspired by, by the Yeah, work. I see Titan is on the call. So Mike, if you want to 
take those. I'm not sure if there's any other vendors on the call. I, I couldn't tell by the names, um, but. I think Christina D'Amato from Energy Resources oh, she is. is also on the call. Okay. So, well, then and then I've also up. worked with Bob yeah. Babcock and uh, from Connecticut Energy Solutions. So there, like I said, there are some really great uh, vendors and there's certainly, there's no shortage of houses of worship that need to be made more energy efficient. We are right. among the draftiest buildings in Connecticut. So, um, okay. does Perfect. anyone else have any other questions? This is like half an hour. I'm trying to think if I have any other questions. Peter Festa is raising his hand. Peter, I'm going to let you have you talk. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, hi. Uh, just unmuting. Um, I, I uh, so wanted to just uh, bring up some of the experiences that uh, my church has had already. Um, we have a, a, a regular HVAC contractor that we've had for years go through an audit and, and uh, quote on, um, uh, you know, uh, upgrades and improvements to our HVAC system um, uh, just recently. Um, but uh, I really was not... <clears throat> happy with their their um their focus it it seemed that um you know they were they were really happy to uh you know upgrade our uh, gas boiler system um and and touted how it will be um you know much more efficient and, and so forth um but then uh, when it came to all of our air conditioners and converting them to heat pumps, um, they really weren't that knowledgeable. Um, and um, they also seem to not have knowledge on what I've been reading about for the past year, two years or so, you know, about uh, cold climate heat pumps that can really do a lot more um, uh, work in heating um uh, buildings uh through a, a you know in some cases throughout the entire winter um and you get a lot of contractors that will just say to you well you know we'd be happy to give you heat pumps but you know you're not you really can't use them when the outside temperature is below 30 degrees fahrenheit and they're not efficient well it's this really not the state of the art and i'm so frustrated to hear that kind of thing over and over again. And I'm just really trying to find someone that can speak the language of the state of the art on heat pumps um, and give me a feeling like they're, you know, they're really doing the best to electrify my church. Um, okay. And I'm just wondering what experience you've had with that. So I run the program. I'm not the subject matter expert on heat pumps because um, I don't sell them but I do, you know, approve the projects with them. I can definitely find out who you worked with. I don't want you to announce it on this call, but I will provide you the list of names of my vendors that do the do a, a majority of heat pump projects that might be able to explain a little better. You know, one thing to consider too is I'm not 100% sure if heat pumps is the best solution in an open church. I don't know how effectively they work, but I don't, you know... I'm sure they can explain all of that stuff as well. Um, I'm sure there is a state of a state of art piece of equipment that would work really great, but it may not be something that could be incentivized, which is why they're not presenting that to you. Um, because our vendors do want to work with something that they can make sure that's incentivized through our program. And there is some requirements for the, you know, pieces of equipment that we provide incentives for. Uh, but I will definitely get you some information from other vendors um, or, you know, the people that they're buying the equipment from that could explain it a little better than I can, for sure. Well, and this so actually I'll write dovetails, that down. This dovetails yeah. with a question that Bob Dickinson had. He just said, Old St. Andrews just had their audit done there in Bloomfield. And he said, right. bottom line, 3000 per year savings, 130000 uh, loan required after incentives. So they 
I have can't. Yeah, because heat pumps are ex very expensive, but HVAC equipment also is very expensive. Um, sure. And so, so he, what I usually encourage, he said it would be beneficial if proposal had alternatives to just do the more cost effective parts. And I think my answer to this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Colleen, is that you can ask them to break down your proposal into, you know, I, yeah. I have definitely said, especially if someone's looking at heat pumps, you know, right. I've said, look at what it, look at what it would do, how much it would cost to do heat pumps just in the church offices or the the house of worship office offices versus the sanctuary because the right. offices get the most amount of use. So could Bob go back to that vendor and say, we'd like to see something broken down by the most cost? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you're the customer, so you can ask for whatever you want. If you want it broken down into, you know, separate projects or, you know, really the way it works for, with the utilities, the best way to get the biggest bang for your buck is to include everything in one project. The more work you do, the better the savings are, especially when there's big pieces of equipment going on there. Um, but replacing equipment in churches just in general is more costly just because of the size and of equipment that you need. Um, to cool or heat those big open spaces. Um, but you can 100% ask them to break it down, whether it is replacing boilers versus doing heat pumps. They should be able to give you a full comprehensive review um, either way. Um, what they would do with us is they would basically submit two separate projects so that we could you know, break it down for them to then provide it to you. Um, and that's really, you know, what we ask them to do. If the customer's asking for that, they're usually going to go with the most cost effective opportunity when they're presenting a contract to you or a proposal, instead of drawing it out in other ways that they know wouldn't be cost effective, but you can always ask. Mm -hmm. um, and um, someone, sorry, Pastor Linda from FBC New Haven uh, yes. said, is there a vendor I can speak to about cost-effective, energy-efficient ways to add air conditioning to a large sanctuary with solely stained glass windows? Some so, of them yeah. open, but most don't. So we are actually looking at a opportunity for a new situation with savings for windows. Um, we do incentivize window replacement in our program, it's just very, very, very expensive currently because there's not great savings. But I have been speaking to a new company that um, has a better scenario for windows that could be possibly installed before, like in front of a stained glass window or behind it to, to preserve the look of the stained glass, but um, have a better uh, rating so we are just in the early stages of talking about this window pilot, um, which at least one of the vendors on the call knows about because I've, you know, they brought it up to me as well about a situation for stained glass windows. But this is something that a lot of churches face is, you know, they want to replace the windows, but there's they, they can't afford it. It's just too crazy expensive and there isn't a really good um, scenario with us. So we've we've actually went out to, the market and found this company that we think may, you know, be able to possibly give a 50% incentive on those, mm. you know, the windows. Um, so we are just starting to create a pilot. Um, it's probably not going to be announced until 2025. So that is something that's coming. Um, but we have to internally, uh, add some things into our systems to even generate incentives on projects. And we're not there yet, but we're getting there. So we have, you know, one or two test customers that we are looking to do this with, but it's probably two or three months out before we even can present a proposal to them. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as we do approve that, there's some other utilities out there that are doing this and they're able to offer 50% incentives on window replacements that would be huge for us because lighting is kind of getting phased out, which is the majority of our program. So right. and I would, I would encourage anyone who hasn't, if you haven't done this, or if you know of a house of worship, you know, in your area that hasn't done it, let them know about the, the small business and micro business program, because 
part of the reason lighting is get, getting phased out is that a lot of folks have already done it. But there, if you walk into any house of worship, you can definitely find huge spaces with really old lighting that needs to be updated. And I want them to be able to take care, advantage of all those incentives, you know, while they're still there. Uh, and I would say the windows will be huge for houses of worship because even the windows that can't be replaced because they're these beautiful, old, gorgeous stained glass windows and they don't want to replace them. It would be great if they were more energy efficient. And so it's right. nice to hear that there are some companies able to preserve the look of those windows while also making them, you know, more. So airtight. we think they can, we think they can, we haven't actually tested it yet, but we do have a customer that is interested at least one. And I have another conversation next week with another one. Um, but um, pastor Watkins, I'd love to talk to you about it as well as a potential location for a pilot. Um, if that's something you're looking to do, um, it might be a good opportunity with some enriched incentives, incentives on the window replacements or just retrofitting around those stained glass windows so that we can see if it actually works um, to save, you know, energy there. So more to come on that, but we are looking at other scenarios. You know, we've increased, increased some of our weatherization opportunities. Um, right. And we're doing a, a big training for our vendors next week um, on some new ways to save. Um, so they're going to be, you know, going through some training classes. And, you know, again, we're always looking at new opportunities we can add to our program. Um, so any suggestions you have, please send my way. Uh, someone, uh, anonymous person, wanted to know, for those of us with CMEEC utilities, do the same incentives still apply? I don't know what CMEE see utilities are so i don't either if, if you're talking about you know like wallingford electric it you know things like that our program is not run in those um towns right. so this so would be only ever source and ui um that i work with on the small business program i don't know if that is what you're referring to they do have i know the the municipal utilities do have their own energy uh, efficiency programs they're not always quite as robust um but but they they are helpful uh, and so you know it's definitely worth calling your your municipal your municipal utility to find out what is available um and the i believe the vendors that i work with can also sort of help you navigate that that paperwork process because that's actually what can be um challenging is, is that there's just a lot yeah. of paperwork to do and a lot of things to schedule. Yeah. Um, I did see a, a, a statement here from Bob about lighting being included in proposals when all lighting is already LED. So they're not all LED. The majority, the majority of, you know, places are already converted. So we are phasing it out. They've removed it out of residential programs already. But in the small business program, there are still plenty of businesses that are not upgraded to LED. So we are still giving um, incentives on those. And um, so those are staying in our program, at least in 2024 and 2025. The incentive will be reduced slightly in 2025. But we are, you know, making the case that we still need to include it for small businesses in my program. For sure. And I, I will say that is true in the Eversource territory too. I go into houses of worship frequently where maybe some of the lighting, they've sort of manually upgraded to LED lighting. But when you go into like large sections, like their, their fellowship hall or, or, you know, that sort of thing, it's all this very old lighting that hasn't been touched in decades. So there's still lots of opportunity for lighting upgrades in houses of worship. So I was really glad to see that still existed for them. So Melinda, your hand is raised again. Yes. Okay. Oh, it is. All right. Go ahead. In, okay. So I, I just realized, I thought I, I understood what Colleen was saying, but the thing about the 90%, what I wrote was 90% for every measure till November 1st, except electric heat pumps. But I, I couldn't actually explain that to anybody else, I realized. So I, I still don't quite understand what is, it's a 90% of what, and, and it covers everything, uh, every all the work except electric heat pumps. So we have a list of, of what we call measures in our program. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be, you know, like thermostats, 
you know, lighting, equipment, things like that. So there's, I could provide a whole list. I don't know, you know, and, and the vendor that comes out to your facility can go through everything with you. What I don't cover um, with that is going to be taxes. Most churches are tax exempt, so you probably don't have to worry about that. Um, but other things like if they have to rent a lift to get up to a really high light, um, if they have to dispose of things, sometimes there's additional charges they add into a project for those types of things. Um, if we're replacing light bulbs specifically, bulbs are not included, but a fixture is included. So there's there's a list of things um, that's covered and probably the best way to explain it to other people is to let the vendor who comes out, you know, walk you through all of that and discuss it. But for the majority of the items on your project, it would be covered. Okay. And, just and, like and for yeah. this special deal, we are including equipment replacement with the exception of heat pumps in the 90% incentive, which is never covered. Usually it's, it's non-equipment measures get up to the 80%. Um, so this is, you know, a little bit more of an enrichment for churches and schools that we added in, in the UI territory only. Okay. Oh, okay. And can you give me one example of equipment that would be covered? Yeah. So pretty much any other like HVAC equipment, stuff like that. Um, oh. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Just heat pumps separately is, is right. Not. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And and so is there a is there a project cost limit to that incentive? No, um, no. So this is a normally an unheard of situation. We wouldn't offer this, but I have a lot of money left to spend in my budget through at the end of the year. Um, really because we changed our focus slightly on well, we didn't change the focus. The vendors kind of changed their focus on on projects they were working on because um, our micro business program, um, kind of took over cause it's a, a really easy, you know, thing to present. It's very clear and concise to customers. Um, most customers are willing to do a smaller project and sign off on that. So 90% of my projects are micro business projects that are very minimal cost. So I haven't spent my budget that I have set aside for the program year. So because I have more money in my budget, we are um, specifically targeting certain places like churches and schools that strategically would benefit from the use of this money more right. than you know another large customer. I love to hear it. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Linda, I'm gonna allow you to talk and ask you to unmute. So hopefully. Yes, I had really just wanted to say that um, First Baptist Church in New Haven has actually been the recipient of a grant through Interfaith Power and Light, and we were able to replace all of our fluorescent tube lighting uh, with energy efficiency LED lighting, right. and it looks so much more contemporary as mm. a result of the new lighting. And mm -hmm. the church is actually brighter. You can walk into the fellowship hall and it is much brighter. And so we're looking forward to the cost savings uh, as the months go on. But I just wanted to uh, thank you all once again for your opportunity and for the professionalism of the team that worked on it. It took them about maybe a day and a half. And again, there's been a noticeable difference. So thank That's you. That's great. Great. That's great. So and glad to hear that. Perfect, this is a perfect segue because yes, um, First Baptist Church of New Haven was a recipient of one of, we have a small grant program for energy efficiency. Uh, we're targeting our, our funds right now in environmental justice communities and distressed municipalities. Uh, but uh, houses of worship in those areas can receive a grant of up to $1,000 to apply to their costs. So that's on top of the rebates and helps them um, helps them with that, that cost. We have a very easy application and I ask for that application plus the proposal and the install date. And then, you know, we, uh, approve them and get them out. We've given out eight grants so far. We've got some funding left and are always happy to help, help folks. So, um, I'm glad that Pastor Linda was able to, to give us a little, um, 
promotion for that because we'd love to be able to help more more congregations with that. So that's great. Um, I see Peter Festa also just put another comment in here um, about the federal IRA grant um, for heat pumps in New England. So I don't know the specifics about that, but I will let you know. Um, I know it's a lot of it is for residential, um, but I will ask if it is applying to any customers in my area as well. I think what I've heard about that particular heat pump money is that it is a residential effort. Um, right. But, uh, and, and the, for folks who are wondering, the heat pump incentive is $1,500 per ton. So. Uh, right. Sorry. 1500 per ton gets added in above and beyond what I already incentivize. Right. Um, so that, that, you know, it gets that added kicker in there already. So, so a house of worship would have, um, a heat pump that would be a couple tons. So they, the, uh, incentive would be more than 1500, but the overall cost would be more too. I mean, it's the heat pumps are definitely an investment. I always encourage folks to do, uh, the energy efficiency and take advantage of the energy efficiency first to sort of reduce that load. Um, and then of course, IRE Jen is interested in uh, increased opportunities for solar for houses of worship, which would mean the uh, small commercial cap uh, would have to be raised a bit. So we're, we're, we're thinking about how we could advocate for more solar for houses of worship. Are there any other questions? I feel like we're doing well. We're almost to our time. Um, any other questions before we go? Thank you, Colleen, so much for this. And so, yes, no problem. So I will. I will send out information about the vendors that IRE Jen works with um, that are just great with houses of worship, and they're all super nice people. And I will also send out information about our upcoming webinars because, I, as I said, these projects often dovetail. It is not uncommon for people to investigate solar uh, while they're looking at energy efficiency. And also the restoration funding available through Preservation of Connecticut can also be helpful because it's not uncommon for people to identify some uh, restoration if they're a historic building. I'll send out information about that. And... Um, if you have any questions, you can respond to me. I'll send out Colleen and Rachel's contact information as well. Uh, but please let me know if I can help you. Uh, I'm really happy to. And, you know, UI Houses of Worship, let's get going. Let's let's get Colleen's money because she needs to spend it by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. And tell your friends um, that this is great. I will, this webinar will be on our website, hopefully by tomorrow, as long as YouTube and everyone uh, cooperates with me. And so I encourage you to send the link out to, you know, if you are a, a faith community or, or uh, you know, if you've got contacts with other houses of worship, please send this out. I always try to reach out to everyone, but obviously a trusted colleague is uh, always a welcome, a welcome um, contact for me. So here I've got maybe one more. Let me see one more. Oh, just Pastor Linda saying thank you. Pastor Linda, you are welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is great. All right, folks, I think we are finished. Thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, we'll see you. Please let me know if I can help you in any way. Thank you.